Grok 4 has just been released by XAI and as we try and do here on Plant No Code we're getting a video out showing how you can add Grok 4 into your bubble app. As a quick overview you might want to consider using Grok 4 because it genuinely does perform remarkably well if not exceeding in some well respected metrics compared to other flagship AI models by other AI companies like OpenAI and Anthropic. And if you want to learn just how to build an AI application with no code there's no better place than becoming a Planet No Code member and that's clicking the link down in the description uh, because we've got hundreds of Bob tutorial videos showing you how to build a wide range of apps and including like a chat GPT clone um, but also we've got our own AI that's custom trained on our video data so if you have a question if you get stuck save yourself hours you can do a search you can get the answer and uh, right now if the AI returns the wrong answer I'm literally following up with an email uh, to help individuals out so it's well worth becoming a Planet Noco member if you're building an app with Bubble but let's launch right into the X uh, API uh, XAI API, oh, they, they do get more difficult to say. Um, and if we go into the documentation, it's really similar to other AI services. In fact, the kind of chat completion endpoint, there does seem to be an adoption of the open AI standard of how this gets laid out. So let's launch into the bubble app editor and start building this out. So first thing we need to do is go to the bubble API connector and we can find that in plugins. Uh, and go add plugins and I, I've already done that because this is my demo app uh, and I'm going to scroll past all of the other API connections I've done in the past you can see perplexity slack cohere open router pdf.co one on my most recent videos um, and I'm going to go ahead and add in the new one and say xai uh, grok and authenticate with private key and header um, and uh, now I'm going to go across the documentation uh, to work out exactly what goes where. So uh, the uh, key name for the private key is authorization, then it's bearer and your API key. So I'm going to go back into my bubble app. I'm going to write in bearer and I'm going to paste in my API key. And then I'm going to go down. I'm going to say send message and it's going to be type action and uh post how do i know that well action because i want this to be a workflow action in my bubble app uh, post because it says so here in the documentation so i'm going to copy uh, the example they've got to my clipboard and then paste it in here uh, and cool that actually gives me everything that i need to know apart from the endpoint uh, so the endpoint is going to be this with this added to the end so that with that added to the end uh, right I can now go ahead and initialize the call and this is my way of checking what I've got here it works it should do because I've copied it basically directly from the grok documentation um, and it's also teaching my bubble app of what sort of response to expect like the structure of the data that comes back uh, so let's give it a run uh, and I've got an error there are you not supported for this model reasoning effort well that's that's not so good because uh, I've copied that straight from straight from their documentation. Uh, let's try again. Okay, this is a good sign. I'm actually waiting on the AI to respond to the API call. Um, and here we go. We get back our data and it's easier if I go down to raw data uh, because I can then see that the assistant has responded with uh, 303, which uh, is correct. Um, so how do we go about adding this into a bubble app? Basically building out a no-code application that uh, will take a user input and respond to it uh, with Grok. Um, so uh, I'm going to leave the system. Uh, so this this is like a system message. OpenAI now call it uh, the instruction. It was called the developer prompt. This slightly varies how this is formatted. This is more of a uh, an older way now of doing things, especially if you're using the OpenAI Responses um, API. So do just check if you're quickly swapping between these models uh, and these AI providers. Um, you're likely to get errors because there are slight discrepancies between them. If you want to make it really easy to swap between them, we've done a couple of videos looking at providers like Helicone, OpenRouter, and uh, Portkey, which are basically middleware. They sit in the middle. You give them your API keys. You make your, your 
request. So then they act like a proxy for the API call. It allows you to track analytics data, um, but it also means that you can do comparison between models from different AI providers and easily swap them in, version control your prompt, what model's being used, that sort of thing. Um, so let's add this into a page. So I'm going to create a new page in my bubble app. I'm going to call it Grok. This is not to be confused with Grok, which is uh, G-R-O-Q, uh, which is more of an AI provider emphasis on hardware. Um, and uh, their emphasis is that uh, they believe that their servers are particularly optimized for running um, AI really quickly. Uh, but yep, this is Elon Musk's Grok that we're working with today. So I'm going to add in a multi-line input. If you're styling a bubble app, uh, do check out our other videos because you wouldn't be using fixed layout. You'd be using rows and columns. But for the sake of this video, so it's nice and quick, we'll be using fix. Just makes it drag and drop, but it doesn't make it responsive. Um, so then let's add in a button. We'll say send message. Now with bubble, you can save to the database, but we don't need to do that in this instance. I just want to, to print on the page the response that comes back. And one way of doing that is to use a custom state, which is like a bucket or a variable for storing data. If the user refreshes the page, that data is lost. Um, uh, you can create a custom state anywhere on the page. I like to do, add it to the page itself. Otherwise I kind of forget where I put them. Um, so I'm just gonna say response and it's of type text. And then here, this text is simply going to my custom state, which is grok, because that's my page. If it was a different element, you would pick that element here, and it's the custom state response. Great, and uh, let's make sure that this is not empty. And now we add on our workflow. And so because I started in the Bubble API connector, I've successfully initialized my call, which means that if I search for grok, uh, so there we go, I've demoed the other grok with a Q, but this is grok with a K. The labeling here is just whatever you've labeled it in the API connector. If you don't see it, it's probably because you've uh, initialized it and got an error, or you've got it set to data rather than action, uh, because this is a workflow action. So we'll say send message and, ah, right, yeah, I need to change what bits are uh, like dynamic values uh, in the call, because I don't want to just change it all in the workflow, although you can. Um, so I'm going to say, here's the content. And I'm just going to label that as content. I'm using triangle brackets because in this part of the API connector, it's triangle brackets that Bubble says makes dynamic values. It's not private because uh, this is content the user is providing, unlike uh, the API key, which is private. You don't want your users to access that. Um, now, if I was to reinitialize the call now, I'd get an error because it's sending a completely blank. It's not even, uh, uh, it's not even blank like like that would be blank. So if I wanted to reinitialize it because maybe I'm making some more changes, I want to check that I'm not broken or anything, uh, I'd need to put the speech marks back in. Um, so effectively, this is for this is for testing um, and uh, for putting dummy data in. Uh, so we go back to the workflow. Now I've got that particular field. Just in case you're new to Bubble, um, we're also I'll do it here as well. So I'll, I'll call this system because now. I've got both fields. So I need to JSON safe what I'm putting in here because uh, how does the, you know, if a user submits a message and they use speech marks, I need to distinguish that that is part of the text rather than part of the JSON code. And one way I can do that is arbitrary text, JSON safe. And arbitrary text can be nested. This is kind of one level deep. Um, and it's just a way of grouping together a load of text. Um, so I can just say here, you are a helpful assistant uh, so i could of course put dynamic values in here but i'm not going to um, and then here is the content so if i wanted to m combine the user's input with uh, some other data i would put them both in arbitrary text but in this case i can just say multi-line input a's value json safe perfect so now i want to set the state Click that variable on the page of the response. So I find my response variable, my response custom state, and I go into the results. And I basically have to find here where the output was. And this can be a little bit tricky uh, because it slightly varies. Um, and one way of really checking it is to run the call again. So I'll say, you are a helpful assistant. Uh, initialize the call. 
So getting a response of hello obviously is really downplaying the ability of Grok. So we can see that the response comes back in choices message content. Now choices is a list. So I'm going choices first item, index zero, message content. So click save, uh, go back to my workflow. So the responses, choices, first item, message content. Right, let's demo it. I think we're there. Right. So here's my page and you can see just how easy and quick it is to build, um, to basically test the concept out in Bubble. Um, so I'm going to say something like, um, plan a uh plan a three-day trip to paris respond with just three uh brief bullet points of ideas and i'm going to send the message uh so i've got the debugger running but i'm just going to click run uh must have been from a previous video so now we're waiting for a response from Grok. Uh, Bubble released streaming uh, a month or two ago. We've got videos covering that. So if you want you know, to come in letter by letter or group chunk of letters by letter, uh, you can do that. Um, but we just had to wait for the full response to come back. You might want to add in a loading animation using like a bit of CSS or a uh, Lottie. Again, we've got uh videos demonstrating how you can do that but there you go we've now got our response back uh, as with most ai models it's responding in markdown so if we wanted to format that in bubble uh we would either need to do a find and replace or we need to update our system prompt to say respond using bb code because that's the uh the kind of baked in rich text mode that bubble supports um or you can of course just print markdown or html to the page and you can find a plugin that would uh well, well html you can print in a code block you would then need to use a bit of custom CSS to you know, kind of jazz it up a bit, um, or you would convert it from Markdown to BB code. And I believe there are plugins that do that. We cover most of those things in our video library. And so if you really want to accelerate what you're building a bubble, you should become a Pint No Code member.